welcome to chapter 14, mitosis. Now you'll see chapter 14, there's several different versions in chapter 14. So go with the flow here and just understand that mitosis is one little chapter, one little tiny bit of, um, of chapter 14. So think about what you looked like as a baby and how you have changed today. What sort of changes have occurred from being a baby to now? This is important to understand as we move into this section of mitosis. Also, when you get injured, how do you think healing takes place when you scrape your knee or get a bruise? What do you think happens? Again, this is important when we start to begin this, this section on mitosis. Now, please recall that the cell theory states that, number one, cells are basic units of living things. Number two, all living things are composed of cells. And number three, all cells come from other cells. This is the important part of the cell theory that we're really going to focus on for mitosis, that all cells come from other cells. Now, why do you think a cell would need to reproduce? So think on that as we begin this lesson. So know that DNA contains chromosomes, which are the structures that contain genetic material passed from generation to generation. So your DNA actually did come from your mother and your father. Now, the term chromatin is the relaxed form of DNA in the cell's nucleus. You will actually see this as we begin uh, going through the process of mitosis. And genes are located on the chromosomes. They are the functional units of heredity. We're going to get into heredity a little bit later um, in Chapter 14, but for now we're going to focus just on mitosis. Before we talk about mitosis, let's talk about of the chromosomes themselves, kind of let's label them. So a cell division involves the copying of genetic material and the splitting of the cell. That's the basis of mitosis here. Now you're going to see the chromosomes are the really important part in mitosis between the splitting of the cell and the replication of the chromosomes or the DNA. Now in your notes, you have a diagram of a chromosome that I'd like for you to label. So the structure of a chromosome looks sort of like this. It almost looks like an X. So the entire chromosome looks like this X. Attached, or in the center here, is a, a centromere. This is almost like the glue that actually holds your X strands together. So you have your centromere right here. Think of that as like sticky tack or some sort of glue. And each strand that we see here is a chromatid. Now, because in this X we actually see two chromatids, we call these sister chromatids, as you can see in this picture here. They're basically replicated chromosomes. They look exactly the same. And eventually, in mitosis, they get split apart. So they hold the same DNA, they hold the same chromosomes, or I should say the, the same genes, but they're replicated, so they are called sister chromatids. So make sure you stop this and label your diagram. Now a replicated chromosome consists of two strands of DNA called sister chromatids, as I just mentioned in the previous slide. These chromatids join at a central point called a centromere. Now in the other picture, they kind of came out really nice. It was almost like a little center point. In the actual picture of a chromosome, you're not going to be able to see the centromere. Just know that this is the point that they actually come together. They kind of touch, and they're almost glued together. And during cell division, they are pulled apart, as you can sort of see in this diagram right here. Okay, so let's talk about prokaryotic cell reproduction, because in essence, that's pretty much what's important for this section of mitosis. Now, we have already learned that prokaryotes have DNA, but it's not in a membrane-bound nucleus. So in this picture is a picture of a, a, a typical prokaryote. Notice that inside all the DNA resides. If we were talking about eukaryotes, it would be inside the nucleus. Here, however, there is no nucleus, so it's just the DNA is sort of all over their place. Now, prokaryotic cell, prokaryote, 
and prokaryotes reproduce by asexual reproduction, which basically means that a single parent passes exact copies of all its DNA to its offspring. There is no replication as if you think of it in terms of sexual reproduction where you have two parents. A lot of prokaryotes reproduce by a type of cell division called binary fission. And this is actually pretty neat because they produce identical offspring. In this picture here, you can sort of see that. You have a prokaryotic cell, and notice in the next little picture here, it is copied, that DNA is copied. The cell will sort of split apart, and then you have two identical haploid cells, or in this case, two identical cells. We'll talk about what the haploid means in a couple, um, in a couple videos from now. And here again, I just have a picture of binary fission for you. Now the prokaryotes have a single chromosome. This is really, really a long piece of chromosome, unlike eukaryotes, which have several. So, uh, for instance, humans have 46. So as the chromosome is replicated, one copy will move towards opposite ends of the cells. As you can see in this picture, here's the prokaryote. It gets duplicated. They start to move to opposite ends of the cell. And then the cell is going to double itself in size, and then it's going to divide. It's going to pinch off here. So now each cell, each new cell, is identical to the original. 